So uh, for the long time, we've been trying to uh, better uh, tailor the treatment according to patients' true risk. And, and as I mentioned, uh, even within those categorizations, uh, there is uh, considerable heterogeneity. And so uh, I was at the ASTRO meeting a few years ago when Dr. Spratt uh, first presented the data that you showed. And I took a screen grab and, and uh, when I returned to the, to the office, I, I looked at those six uh, uh, categories and asked myself, how would I treat each of the patients in those categories differently? And, and that's where uh, we go in the next slide. You see, I, I kind of came up with a decision tree based on those risk categorizations. So patients who have uh, low risk disease uh, and uh, NCCN low risk and a decipher low risk, uh, if you sum those numbers together, you get zero, obviously. They're very low. Um, uh, and uh, what I was thinking is that those patients should best be managed by active surveillance. But if uh, they were unwilling to consider a surveillance, uh, we would offer them uh, radiation therapy in the form of either uh, external beam treatment or brachytherapy, monotherapy. Likewise, the patients who have um, uh, low risk disease and uh, an intermediate risk uh, to cipher score, we would give them uh, monotherapy, uh, either a radiation loan or brachytherapy. But again, many of those are also candidates for active surveillance. But when we get into that challenging group of the intermediate risk uh, uh, cases with either favorable intermediate or unfavorable intermediate, that's when uh, we're all challenged to ask ourselves, when is the uh, appropriate use of hormone therapy? And I thought the uh, scores that uh, uh, Dr. Spratt uh, put forward would be helpful. And so uh, we continue to offer uh, monotherapy for those patients who have that sum score of two, favorable and intermediate risk. But when they have unfavorable and intermediate risk, uh, we consider a short course of engine deprivation therapy, four to six months. And of course, men with high-risk disease, uh, today we still offer them a long-term engine deprivation. And for the very high risk, uh, I, I uh, encourage, of course, all patients to consider clinical trial. But for those patients with the very high risk, uh, we were at the time exploring adjuvant therapies like chemotherapy or some of the new novel anti-angine therapy drugs. So going to the next slide. Second patient is a 67-year-old man uh, with a higher PSA 13 and four of 12 cores were positive with a Gleason grade uh, four plus three. Unfavorable intermediate risk disease. Uh, so again, question comes up, uh, is short course hormone therapy sufficient for him or should he receive a longer course? Next slide. And in this case, the decipher uh, test returned back high risk, even higher than our last gentleman with 47% uh, likelihood of having uh, upgrading at prostatectomy, 31% risk of metastasis, 17% risk of prostate cancer death in 10 years. And so next slide, uh, we, we felt that um, uh, the, again, NCCN risk grouping, uh, unfavorable intermediate risk, two points for that, the high decipher score, two points for that. So he comes into that four category and uh, like the, the previous gentleman, we offered him a uh, long course androgen deprivation therapy. I wanna thank you, Dr. Mahalski, for your time and presentation and thank the attendees for, for joining. Thank you, Ryan. It's been my pleasure and they were great questions. I appreciate the participation.